Howdy folks, Rebecca and Hunter here from Two Player Showdown. Happy New Year! Today we're looking at the latest and greatest from UA Rosenberg, A Feast for Odin. This is Patchwork. If you ever played the game Patchwork where you put little pieces on the board, meet a heavy Euro game a la Agricola or Caverna. Let's take a closer look. To me, in A Feast for Odin, U.A. Rosenberg took pieces of many of his previous games and kind of mushed them all together into one epic game. I mentioned in the opening that it reminds me a lot of Patchwork, and if you've ever played the game Patchwork by U.A. Rosenberg, you know that you take a board and you put pieces on the board to cover spaces. And that's pretty much the basis for the Feast for Odin. You have a home board that you're attempting to cover with various goods that you get by going to this main worker placement area. This area has 61 places that you can put pieces. And if you play the four player version, you get two more on top of that. <laughs> So it may seem a little overwhelming, all your options, but they're kind of divided into categories and the symbology is really easy to follow. And that may be a bit intimidating, but the game comes with a very clear and concise round overview board that will walk you through each little step of the turn and tell you exactly what you need to do. So, A Feast for Odin is a feast on the eyes. As you can see, we have cardboard galore. Each different shaped piece has four different levels that you can upgrade, whether it's from food of different types to resources that will go on your resource board to cover up. And as you fill in your board, you accumulate, you cover up more of the money spaces and accumulate that in income each turn. And you also have opportunities if you surround certain pieces of resources that you can get those for each turn as well. So besides covering up your board to get more income and resources, you can also collect livestock. You obviously have to feed your people every turn. <laughs> and there's also another section at the bottom of the board where you can accumulate ships. Those are used for anything from whaling to trading to going off and pillaging as well. Then you also have um, different shapes and different items that you can get from those um, raids or whaling and whatnot that you can use to further cover your boards. Yeah, Feast for Odin, the first time we played this, we got about halfway through the game and we barely covered our board and we're like, oh man, how are you going to do this? And then in classic UA fashion, the last few turns of the game just explode into just doing tons and tons of stuff and I, I really enjoy that. The, the number of places you can put your workers seemed intimidating at first but I love having lots of options. Mm -hmm. I love trying different paths to win. It's, it's an awesome, awesome epic game. Absolutely. The different choices I think is what makes this game. At first it is a little overwhelming when you first open that box the overwhelming feast of cardboard <laughs> um, and the initial setup is a bear but because they came with these handy dandy little trays you only have that horrific setup that one time and the rest of the time now it's a much much quicker process to get the game going and that makes it easier for you to get it to the table yeah I, I truly do love his games and this is sneaking up to be my favorite UA game. I, I need to play the Hob one more time to, to kind of compare and contrast, but this game is awesome. And what I like about it is it plays really fun as a two-player game. Yep. This is one of our go-tos for a big game right now. Yeah, I mentioned in the opening that really the only difference between one to three players, and it does play, it does have a solo version, at one to three players and four players is you just add two little things down at the bottom of your board down here and what that does for you is it lets you duplicate a place another player has gone in oh, that nice. column so only two columns each game for the four player you can duplicate an action that someone already did uh, and those are randomized each game so you're going to have two of the four columns there's four different columns that you can put your workers in 
um, that you can duplicate when you know, one time. You can go down here and basically do an action within that column that's already been taken. That makes it really nice and easy so that you don't have a lot of complications trying to learn different rules yep. with all of this material for <laughs> different players. That would be the only intimidating thing to me with this game is the sheer amount of components. They're all wonderful components and solid and you have a moose for a starting player. You can't get much better than that. But it is an overwhelming amount. Don't let that intimidate you. Like, power through, and I think you'll find Feast for Odin highly enjoyable. So go feast upon Feast for Odin. Thank you so much Yar! for joining